we will want, of course, a canvas because we're going to be doing an acrylic painting. Um, but if you happen to not have a canvas, that's okay. You can always use some sort of heavyweight paper. Um, if you have watercolor paper or if you have mixed media paper or even just cardstock, that would work perfectly fine too. It is going to curl a little bit if you happen to have paper, um, but just set it under it's the the old fashioned method okay send it under set it under some books for a couple of weeks it'll flatten out so you'll be fine <laughs> but canvas is preferred if you have that um we will want some brushes so i have a flat brush right here i have a pointy brush kind of hard to see that one uh called a round brush and this one i want to say is a size eight but if you have a size six or so that's perfectly fine. Um, I should have mentioned the canvas size that I'm using right here. Um, this is a nine by 12. However, um, all I have with me is an 11 by 14. So I'm gonna be painting on 11 by 14 today, um, but the original is a nine by 12. So really what that all that to say, whatever size canvas you have is totally fine. Um, so if you have a tiny brush, that would be perfect ideal as well. So I happen to have a tiny round brush, but if you happen to have, I don't know, like a, a small, um, what is it? Uh, a small flat brush, that will work fine too. You'll need water, napkins, a palette, or perhaps a paper plate. I like to reuse paper plates all the time. It's a foam plate, so I reuse these. Um, saves saves without having to uh, to waste any as well. Um, what else am I missing? Paints. So if, if y'all are ready, I can start to tell you guys what paints we're going to need. Okay, so we're going to want blue. That's going to be our very first one. And I'm going to be vague on colors because I know everybody here is going to have different brands that they're choosing from. So vague, okay. This one is more like a medium blue. So it's not super dark, but it's not light either. It's more like a, a very um, bluey blue, if that makes sense. I also have white as well. I have green, yellow, brown, purple, and I'll probably bring in like a peach or an orange later on, depending on what they do. Um, I always like to give you guys creative freedom. So whatever um, other colors you want to bring to the picture, absolutely fine. I'm not going to tell you no when it comes to anything. I'm not going to tell you no. You want to experiment with, with something. Say maybe you want to bring out a palette knife or something and use a palette knife on your picture. Absolutely. Go ahead and do it. Um, what else can I say about this? Before I go on, do we have any questions? Okay. All right. Well, if you are new here or or it's been a while since you've been here, my name is Hannah and I also have MS. I was diagnosed in um, 2017. So I've had MS since I was 27 years old. Um, uh, what, what is that like? Coming up on six years now, uh, just sort of learned to live my life and art has helped with all of that. It's helped me to cope with everything. And doing art on a not not quite so much daily basis, but close to daily basis um, has really helped me my mental health, but also I think I think personally my physical health too, because it's that repetition. Um, but anyway, I won't go into that too much. Um, I think we can get started. So um, let's go ahead and I'll set these aside. Speaking of MS, you guys are probably gonna see colors like flipping everywhere. I always drop things, always. First thing we want to do is we're going to use our flat brush and uh, we're going to go ahead and sort of um, take our blue out. We want to create a base layer for our canvas. I'm not going to wet my brush or anything, but if you did, that's okay. I'm gonna take my brush and I wanna put blue over this entire thing, the whole canvas. 
if you happen to have a canvas that actually has edges, um, mine is just the canvas board, it has no edges, um, then go ahead and stretch the canvas, uh, I'm sorry, stretch the paint over the sides. Just kind of do that as you move along. And I know this may seem a little funny, but we definitely want to have this base coat. Your brush strokes don't really matter so much. Although I do tend to, uh, to do these um, wider brush strokes if I have a larger space, but it doesn't really matter which direction they're going right now. We're gonna focus on um, smaller brush strokes later on. Any questions so far? I know I kind of breezed through um, that entire intro. I'll tell you a little bit more about our, our painting in a little bit. Once we've got that blue base on and we, we have a little time to let it dry. Definitely at least want to smooth our brush strokes out. We don't want to have any clumps or bumps of paint, just because those might take a little bit longer. How are you guys doing today? Yeah? You are painting so fast. I'm like <laughs> way behind. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> I I tend to do that. So thank you for pointing it out. Um, I'm, Wasn't I'm a complaint. I was just of... thinking, oh, I'm way behind. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> that is a good point, though. I do tend to paint fast, so I need the reminder sometimes. It, yeah, I just wanted to tell you. Kind of... oh. Uh -huh. I'm Go really ahead. excited. So this is Katie. I'm really excited. This is my first time ever working with acrylics. Um, so I'm really excited we're doing this. So thank you for doing this for us today. Oh, okay. I'm excited for you, Katie. I'm, I'm really like, it's like for my you. second time ever painting as a grown up. So I mean, <laughs> oh my gosh. It's, 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 it's been fun. So thank you. Welcome to the club. Seriously. <laughs> How, so anybody else in here, first time painting with acrylics? I'm just curious. I, this is like my first time painting. Like I painted yeah. with my kids, but never for myself. <laughs> See, that's, that's a, that's a big difference too. It's, it's so different painting for yourself versus painting um, with somebody else and on another piece of painting or piece of painting, another painting that they want to do, especially if it's your kids. So thank you for being here. Wonderful. I'm excited for you guys. Yes, I um I was telling Bavia earlier today. Um I <laughs> I had taught this painting last week for a different organization. And I know some of you guys joined me over there. Um and so I didn't realize I double booked this painting. <laughs> but that's okay. If you happen to be doing this painting um, second time around, then I actually wanted to show you this other painting. So this is a more complicated version of what we're doing, okay? But I invite you to do a more complicated version of the painting. Um, if I hold it up, you can kind of see the differences between the two. I feel like the smaller one is, is a little bit more put together, but this one um, has more of those very freestanding um, uh, Monet-like brush strokes. And I forgot to mention earlier that this is inspired by Claude Monet, the master himself. Put that aside. And I'll explain the differences again in a little bit. I have to... I have to very gently pick up my cat and put her out. Cat number two. <laughs> She's trying to drink the paint water. Let's not do that. Anybody with cats will understand. They get into everything they're not supposed to get into. Yes. I had to chase <laughs> mine out too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. There we go. Okay. So I've spotlighted this picture. 
How are we doing on our backgrounds? Doing all right? I often find that the wider the brush strokes and the more paint you have on, the faster you can you can get it done. Um, I, I always like to take a look at my, my canvas. Once I have everything, uh, I'm sorry, once I have that base coat on there, take a look at it. And if you see little white dots, um, tiny, tiny little things, um, it means that the canvas is showing through. You need a little bit more paint on top of it. So just kind of, it's hard to see when you're in the moment and you're trying to um, really spread the paint on there, but just kind of take a look at it later. Um, see if you need to go over it again. And if you do, it's totally fine. Your paint brushes um, don't really matter so much in this, in this stage. Okay, any questions? Cool. Awesome. I'm excited. Okay. Um, so let me go ahead and explain our picture. Um, now that we're um, we're just kind of waiting. Well, I mean, if you've if you've completely put the uh, um, the paint on there, we just want to wait for it to dry. Um, it's not going to dry completely, but you know, we want to at least get it going. So, as you can see we have lily pads. And to, to point it out, I want to point out these patches. So I can identify at least three main patches. So I got a, I have a huge one here, a little one here, and a large one here. And these patches are made up of um, all of our lily pads. All of our lily pads on, on, the, um, on the pond, they all congregate together. And we do have a few that are out here. They're just kind of doing their own thing, hanging out out here. We're not gonna worry so much about the individual ones out here. Um, those will come later. I'll give you guys a chance to put those on later. Um, our next step after this is dried is to put in our lily pad patches. So again, three main patches, but I want you guys to put in as many patches as you would like to put in. So you guys can put in, I don't know, five patches if you want to, if you if you have space for it. Um, this more complicated painting here, it's a little hard to identify patches. I'm gonna try though, maybe like one, two, three, four, five. Should I consider that a sixth one, maybe? It's very mossy. Okay, so as many as you are, are wanting to fit onto the canvas. Um, and we're gonna do that with a dark green. So if you don't have a dark green, that's okay. We're actually gonna be um, mixing a little bit of blue into our green and that's gonna make it darker. And I guess I'll explain it even further. So, we have all this texture on the water surface right here. All that texture, that's meant to symbolize the, the rippling of the water. So the water, all the, the light is sort of ripples on top of it. And we're gonna do those in stages too. So later on, don't have to worry about this right now. Um, later on, we'll be going through and putting our texture with um, a little bit of white paint mixed with our blue. And it's lightened up more and more, little by little each time. So that texture is gonna be later. Even our lily pads, they have, uh, we work on those in stages as well, where we, we lighten them up little by little every time we put a new layer on them. And that's just to create depth. That's what we wanna do. We wanna create a little bit of depth. So while we're still kind of waiting on this to dry a little bit, um, I'm going to look up um, a few lily pad pictures. Last week I showed some lily pad pictures, but since then I seem to have lost them. That's the thing about not only MS and 
I don't know, maybe ADD too. I think I have that too. And uh, you just lose everything. You get everything, you lose everything. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for them real quick. I found them. Okay. So again, we're waiting for this to dry a little bit. And I'm just gonna take another minute or so to show you guys some uh, lily examples, lily lily pads. These are taken straight from um, Monet's paintings. Just took little screenshots. Um, these are from the Art Institute of Chicago's website. So they're just the right on there for everyone to see. Let me go ahead and share my screen for y'all. If I can work the screen, that would be good. If anyone ever has a chance to go to France, they should visit where Claude Monet painted all these. It's called mm -hmm. Giverny, and it is the most beautiful place in the whole world. Just that, a plug. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I just want to go to France, but, <laughs> France, but yeah, I would, I would love to go to see Giverny. There you go. Can y'all see that? started sharing my yeah. screen yeah. you can see it okay yes yay okay good so i want you guys to see um all of these little um what is it the the lilies themselves um they're very very abstracted so keep that in mind very abstracted here's another one lots of brush strokes here um, there's not a single thing here that is um, uh, realistic at all. So our brush strokes are really going to shine, and that's what really the the point that I want that I want to make. Let your brush strokes be brush strokes. Also, use the colors you want to use. Um, I know that I have my specific colors, which is which were of the um, is it the purples and the yellows but you see almost the full rainbow here it's beautiful and then this one as well lots of of layering of colors so lots of brush strokes everywhere and there's the last what one be, what would be a good background color if if you didn't want to do the blue again oh yeah so if you don't want to do the blue um Perhaps you can do a purple. Perhaps you can do, and that would be be very um, uh, different from this one. You could do purple. You could do even a a green as well. Maybe green would be a good one. But then well, what you can do with your lily pods? Yeah, true. I didn't think about that. Um, came, what about a teal? Since, since I came late. And I don't have to worry about my painting drying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, um, I would do a teal actually, because then I feel like that's a good in between color. So purple or teal. All right, guys, let's do this. Okay, so. I'm not gonna use the flat brush anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse it. Or you can just leave it in your water. Set it aside. Not gonna use it anymore. We're gonna move on to our round brush here. So I mentioned um, letting your brush strokes just be brush strokes. And that is what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So technically I could use my green straight from the uh, the bottle here it's pretty dark um however could we could uh take it a little further than that we could take a little bit of our blue here and then just kind of scooch it aside next to our green and then take some green scooch that aside and i'm going to try to mix it within the same little pile here it's really easy to get carried away and then just kind of accidentally mix um, all of your color onto the actual palette. 
I've done that before. So try to keep it into a little pile. I want a pretty good amount just because I have a bigger canvas. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix a little bit more. And then for me, um, anytime I use the round brush, I always like to spin it, kind of, or not spin it, but kind of twirl it within the little paint pile there. That helps me to, to keep it a little bit smoother. Now I mentioned those patches. So even though we're making patches, we're still gonna have these individual lily pads. And each lily pad is gonna be represented by a swipe. Now, a lot of these swipes or lily pads, they're gonna overlap. So it's absolutely okay if you um, overlap so much that you cover some of them, kind of like that. That's okay, just means you have creative freedom for it later. And I do encourage you guys to go kind of fast on this part, just because you can really tell the difference in your brush strokes. You can tell the difference between a confident quick stroke and a slightly less confident, um, smaller stroke. Some of them are just naturally gonna be smaller. Some are naturally gonna be a little bit larger and it all just depends on how, how much you press down on the, uh, on the canvas. With practice, you'll kind of get used to it. With practice, you'll be able to tell um, how thick a, a, a stroke to make it just, just by pressing down. Now that's a pretty big patch. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it like that. And we can move on to another one. Maybe I wanna put one here. Once again, I'm not gonna worry so much about um, these smaller lily pads. We'll make those later those individuals. Just wanna make the general lily pad um, patch. Any other questions? Anything? Feel free to make some more paint as you see fit. So getting some blue, getting some green, Maybe down here, closer to the audience, I'm gonna have like this much larger lily pad where I can really stretch it out. I can really press down a little bit um, harder, closer to the front here, because that's closer to the viewer of your painting. Maybe I'll have a couple of large ones. Why not? It's really um, tempting for me to just make those smaller ones. I'm doing it without even thinking about it. But those those smaller ones, they'll just kind of get in the way whenever we do our our uh, our waves out here not our waves our reflection so I'll just kind of put a few more and then leave it at that is it the light that is making them look a different color on the big patch at the bottom over here this is um, later on, on the, when the we other add, mm -hmm. on the other uh, canvas. Oh, like mm -hmm. are they all the same color? Is that just the light making it look different? Oh yeah, it's just the light. You okay, I just want to make sure I didn't miss something. Okay. No, <laughs> Thank you're you. good. <laughs> you're good. Yeah, that's the light, and that's also my um, 
reflectively going into the green, but not the mixed green. That's what that is too, in case you're seeing some of that. Yeah, but it's supposed to be the same. It's supposed to be the same color. How y'all doing? How y'all doing with it? Y'all getting the hang of the uh, the brush strokes? If you need a little help, let me know. Always feel free to uh, raise your hand or you can just kind of shout it to me too because I'm not always looking at the screen, so. What I've been wanting to do just for myself is um, self-portraits, but in the Monet style, just to kind of challenge myself. That would be really cool. I think it'd be really fun, yeah. I'm like, oh no, I don't wanna be challenged like that. <laughs> I need a challenge, I really do. And I've been working on um, uh, portraits um, for for other students of mine um, at the VA. And so I've just been in like a people portrait drawing mood recently. So that's just what I've been drawing a lot of. And just whenever you are finished, you can rinse your brush. We will be moving on in probably about another minute to the water. Just gonna be working on the, the water back here. All that texture, that's what we're gonna do. And you might have to clean your brushes a couple times. I always like to just kind of, um, swipe the bottom. And in case this is your first time using paints or you don't use paints often, um, always treat your brushes, uh, the bristles, treat the brish bristles like a unit. So they always swipe together, even at the bottom of the cup, always swipe them together, even when you're washing them too. Just a little side note, while you guys are working. Um, anytime I wash my brushes, and I, I, I do, it's, it's, how I, it's how I keep um, my cheaper brushes for a long period of time. I always wash them. So I'll put a little bit of dish soap right in my palm here, and then I'll kind of rub them around like this. And then you'll, you'd see the, um, the paint just kind of trickle out of it always with this kind of motion, always just kind of moving the brush around, just as a little side note, and then you can rinse it under the water. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pour out some more blue onto my little um, palette here. Getting close to running out of this blue. I use it all the time. And now I'm gonna pour out my white paint. I'm gonna put them really close to each other. And whenever you're ready, you can start this whenever you're finished with the patches. You can go ahead and take your blue paint and I'm going to scooch some over to the side because once again, we're going to do a little bit more mixing. I'm going to take just a little bit of my white paint here. I'm going to mix that in with my little pile of blue paint. Now we're just looking to lighten it up just a little bit, not too, too much. Just enough to set it apart from our background. It's not a light blue, it's not a baby blue. It's just a little bit lighter than our first blue. 
the blue of our background. Now for me, I have to make sure that you guys are actually able to see it on the screen. Hopefully you can. Um, and you can start this anywhere, doesn't really matter. Um, I'll just start right here, the most obvious spot. These are gonna be individual little brush strokes that go up and down. And we're gonna be layering this everywhere. I'm talking like all of the entire blue space. And at some point, you're gonna need to come pretty close to your patches here. And just naturally, just as you keep going along, you're gonna cover up some of them. And I do encourage you guys to overlap it a little bit. I feel like it creates a, um, a more dynamic painting if you're able to overlap it just a little bit, just around the edges there. But it's really the same texture throughout the whole painting. Some of your brush strokes just are naturally going to be thicker. Some are naturally gonna be thinner. By default, I'm gonna try to make them a little bit thinner, but again, it's not really gonna happen evenly and we don't really want it to happen evenly either. We really wanna have these variation in brush sizes, the amount of brush strokes naturally you're gonna find that your hand wants to make a pattern. And if you look closely, um, my hand tends to uh, put equal distance between each of the brush strokes. So I'm gonna try not to do that. I'm gonna try to make them a little bit more randomized. Just kind of notice it as it happens. And again, I'm approaching another one of my little pond patches or lily patches. And it's just gonna overlap naturally. So I'm just gonna let it happen. And if you happen to have a, um, a wide area in between your patches, like in here, for example, I can go ahead and squeeze some of these brush strokes right in between only if it's just kind of a wide area. If not, then I wouldn't really worry to worry about it. I definitely have some right in here. But I'm just gonna put a few and then I'm gonna just kind of move on. Not a huge deal. I want to move my camera a little closer so you can see some of it because I know some of it's shiny. Kind of see some detail there. Any questions? All right, everybody's, everybody's uh, busy. Has anybody done anything creative this week? Tony, anything? <laughs> You're my you're the person that I go to. <laughs> I'm working on a quilt for my kids. Oh, cool. oh who's 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 uh, speaking? I did it yesterday. This is my first. Um, oh. Can you see it? There we go. I spotlighted oh, Tony. Oh, well, that's cool. Like that's cool. cool. Really nice, Tony. Oh, I know. I like that. I love the um, the the wine dripping down, but I love the way it hits the the uh, the wine glass. As you can see, this is a little off off balance. <laughs> I, I I didn't see it until you pointed it out. <laughs> That's funny. So it seems like just create another line and then make the want the mistake of reflection or something. Uh Make the mistake a reflection. Like the um... oh, I see. Yeah, right there. Right. I think you can. Um, I think that it's very, it's very much a delicate area that you'd have to be careful with. But um, I think you can make it a a uh, a shiny part. 
Mm. It sounds like you have an idea already. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. I did something too. Anna. Yeah, Judy. Judy well, my daughter my daughter is going to deliver in in March, and so of course I have to do another uh, shopper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so congrats. Okay, I I love doing new shirts. Oh, <laughs> cute. Cool. So I did fair and and uh, oh. fabric markers. This one says, I have the coolest mom. She stays up with me all night. There's a little bottle. That's so cute. I got Step Aside Barbie. There's a new doll in town. <laughs> and party my crib. That's off. my favorite. <laughs> That's my favorite. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody done these? This is a, this is a um, diaper baby. Oh, You've never yeah. seen that. That's the yeah, first I for used, me. I used all her little hats that I had when she was a baby. So yeah. oh, very cute. cheap, very inexpensive to do. <laughs> it's just rolled up diapers and, and I'll, you put oh. a passy in the middle. Oh. <laughs> cute. You really got creative. You did a lot. Oh, I, like, I, like doing, I like doing that kind of stuff, but I like painting. This is very relaxing. <laughs> good uh yeah my favorite is the party at 2 a.m i love yeah, that one. yeah i i i have like i don't know six of them with different sayings i don't really oh that's adorable i love your handwriting on them <laughs> um actually it was it, the fabric markers are a little tough to do um it, there's different kinds out there so you have to uh -huh. kind of huh search around for some of the you know and, and okay if you, if you use the paint you know sometimes it splats out you know so. um okay like the fabric paint yeah oh okay I guess I'm not familiar with fabric paint specifically um I use the puffy paint I don't know if if that's yeah what you yeah yeah and there's there's lots of different kinds of like fabric paint too and it's oh, okay sometimes a little difficult to do yeah huh well you did really well <laughs> thank you I hand I as you. steady as it used to be <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell <laughs> anyone else want to share something I did I've paid it um I I just played with my acrylic paint and stencils and I think I blurred my background hold on I think my background is blurred. Let me. Oh, there we okay. go. There you go. There you okay. go. There you go. Oh, cool. It's a, it's just, it's just stencils and different coloring and. Ooh, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I just kind of. Yeah. I'm just I'm like I'm just like so I just kind of. Yeah, I just did it on a twelve by twelve. Just kind of played nice. around. Nice. Yeah, I could the come up. <laughs> the spider stencil is my favorite. Yeah, I had a, awesome. a stencil like that. So, oh, yeah. man, that's yeah, really cool. yeah. <laughs> nice, very cool. Thank you for sharing. I just played with my tools. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all I the did. goal. Have, have fun yeah. with it. <laughs> cool, guys. Anyone else? I wrote a poem. <laughs> You yeah. are a poem. Hey. Yeah, my okay, goal is to, cool. my goal is to write 50 poems this year. And so oh. I'm on that was number three for me. <laughs> okay. So I think I'm still on pace. Um yeah, it sounds like it because um so how many is that per week? That's like you know? one per week. <laughs> Okay, that's not, oh yeah, duh, 56, 56 weeks, right, in a year, that makes sense. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I even know how to start, um, and I, I'd thought about taking a poetry class or like looking for tutorials online, something, because I don't even know how to access my inner author. 
don't know what she sounds like, don't know what she would say. I feel like I need a program like that because I, I do want to you know, learn how to write better. I'm better at communicating on, you know, with art than I am with my words sometimes. Well, that's what you're good at. Yeah, I just, I want to diversify, you know, a new skill. Well, you got, you got, you know, I've only had 40 more years than you to do these kinds of things. <laughs> 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 okay how are you guys doing with your uh the texture i have a question are you continuing to make it lighter and lighter and then go over it and then like because it looks like you have some spots now that are almost actually just like white yeah um so these are these definitely are lighter they're not completely white um, so I think the ones that are translating as completely white are just not um, finished dry, drying yet. Um, there, I know that I am not the most um, consistent mixer. So I might accidentally grab a little bit more uh, white than I intended and then just go straight onto the canvas. And that's totally fine if you happen to find yourself doing that too, so. Um, and in fact, our next step, I'm trying to think if it's after the lily pads or not, but anyway, our next step with the water is actually to lighten up our blue just a little bit more than we already have. So it's absolutely okay if, if some of them are inconsistent. Hope that makes sense. But the, um, the goal of the water is to have, I think I put four layers of really, of, of lighter and lighter blues. Um, so you can see the first set of, of, uh, of light blue paint is right here. And then I, I lightened it up a little bit more and put that throughout our, my picture. And then I did it once again, a little bit lighter than that before I finally put these horizontal um, horizontal and uh, I guess slightly curvy ones right here. These are the lightest, the absolute lightest, the ones that go horizontally. Are you calling the water the white? Um, I think I, I meant to say lighter blue. No, because well, you know, you're saying we're doing the water. I'm like, mm -hmm. obviously, I'm not doing the water, but you don't. You, oh. You just... uh -huh. When you're referring oh, yeah. to the water, you mean these white spots are the water because you're calling it yes. texture. I was going to ask you what it what yeah. it is, and then you said texture, and now you said water, and I'm mm -hmm. like, okay. Yeah, I I, I know I, I I keep jumping back and forth, um, but it is the texture of the ripples of the water. It's the light that shines onto the water, so the light can be um, different strengths. If that makes sense, the lightest part. Uh, right here, the lightest parts of the water that you see here, those are the really, really bright um, uh, sparkles that you see on the water. Does that make a little more sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a Monday, guys. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. I think that whenever you're ready, 
um, we can go ahead and and start um, phase two. I'll just call them phases. Phase two of our lightning, our light blue. So what I'm going to do is I'll I'll mix up a little bit of that same blue that I've been using, the light one. But after I've mixed it up a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit more white to it. So let's lighten it up even more. Once again, it's not it's not like a baby blue. We haven't gotten to that point yet. But at least it's lighter than the last blue that we just used. And none of these are going to be precise uh, measurements. None of these. Once you are ready, um, I'm going to sort of try to figure out where I want my audience to look. Where do I want this gaze to be? Now, in this picture, the gaze is right here. And you can tell because most of the really light blues are going to be right here, front and center, most of them. Now, keep in mind, that's the very light blue, the baby blue at the very, very end. Um, but for the most part, I just kind of want to keep this next phase of blue within a certain area. Perhaps I can do mostly right here. Perhaps I can stretch it out here. The only thing that's important here is that um, there's just a little bit less than the first phase of blue. I'm still going to spread it quite a bit, but not as much as that first phase of blue. And once again, I'm going to watch out for um, creating those patterns. Don't want, don't want too many patterns here. Because again, your hand is naturally just going to create those patterns. You're only well, humans. And then once again, if you happen to um, overlap your uh, your lily pads over here, that's absolutely fine. You know, speaking of patterns, because before mm -hmm. I did this class with you. I'm not visual. I just don't see things. You know, I, mm -hmm. I just, just never have been that way. And then I noticed, oh, yeah, I'm pulling out of my driveway. And I'm like, oh, look at the bark on that tree. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that goes. And then I was cutting a persimmon and I cut it sort of midway. Like, uh -huh. I went, oh, look at that pattern. It's so beautiful. Oh, man. So it just, it just has so many reverberating effects. Oh, I mean, love that. You know, the point is not just to make a pretty picture. You know, the point is, yeah. What what else is is happening? What are you What are you What are you learning? And I remember, I'm really happy that you're you're learning, Karen. If anybody like, if you guys can take anything away from this class, I've I've done my part. But I love that you're you're seeing the patterns everywhere too. In just so many ways, it just it's it's constant. And today I was listening to a book someone from the MS support recommended called mm -hmm. The Gift. And um, the gift. her daughter had a had a had a head injury, and so she was talking about how she's watched her daughter, who was an adult when she had the injury, create new neural pathways and yeah. And come up with more, oh, so that, that was it. And come up with more creative ways to do things that she was making a, a recipe. And she said, you know, she if she just followed the recipe, but she has to adapt. So it's like, we have to do that with MS. You have to constantly adapt mm -hmm. to the changes and that it creates new neural pathways and that people, here I am, fine. They could create art when they never did that before. Yeah. And so yeah <laughs> yeah your your story always really amazes me um especially since you have to use your non-dominant hand and you've come so far and i was like oh that's why i can do this yeah um yeah i've 
and I know I've mentioned it in this class before, but that idea right there, that idea that, that you can create those new neural pathways, that really gave me hope. It gave me hope when I was at my, at my lowest um, several years ago. And uh, I just knew that I could, I just had a lot of work to do. Felt like, I felt like a toddler, you know, trying to learn these things all over again. Um, these things that used to come so naturally, but, you know, through repetition and being persistent and not giving up when I wanted to give up, I felt like, uh, I felt like I did create new neural pathways. And, that, and that's what, you know, this, she talked about her daughter that, um, look, I find that, like last time I was here, I was just mm -hmm. like, oh my God. Making this it just like I feel giddy inside. It's just something like I've never done this before. Oh my god, I just feel I you know, and then I get disappointed when I don't like what's happening. Oh, I thought it was fine, and now I don't like yeah. it. And then and but I keep sticking to it. And she said, Yeah, the look on her daughter's face when she, you know, recreates new things. Mm -hmm. um, she said it was the same thing when she was a, a little girl and learning how to read. Oh, I love that. Who do you remember the author? Yeah, yeah. By chance, see if yeah, I can. Was, like Kim was the one who said, "You, you know, you should read this book." Her name oh, okay. is Edie, Edie Eggers. I can send you. I I would say I put it in the chat, but you know, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I was actually thinking um, I would put it in the chat myself if her I name, find it's it. It's not the gift, and her name is Edie Eggers. And she's okay. she was 92 when she wrote the book. She's a Holocaust survivor. Like okay. seriously, I mean, she 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 could have should have died, you know, from what she experienced. And wow. she, so it's very inspiring, you know, how she talks about that she made choices, you know, that that you can make a choice. You could talk about what you don't have, or you can go, what's next? What's new? Is it called the gift? 14 yeah. lessons to save your life. Say okay. that again. Oh, okay. Uh, 14 lessons to save your life. Probably. And I but see, I, I see the choice. Yeah. Yeah. I see it. The one I'm the reading is the yeah. gift. Because she said people okay. read the choice. And then I think Kim read both of them. Oh, but okay. Very cool. Yeah, I really want to read this. I'm going to put this in the chat for anybody who is interested since I'm only gotten into like two paragraphs, I mean, two chapters. And I'm disappointed because my grandmother was Hungarian. Oh and have the re I don't like the reader's voice. She's like my age. And it's like, and I've heard the author in a, in mm -hmm. a film. So it's like, she should talk with a Hungarian accent. Hungarian accent. <laughs> All right, guys. So we are going to go ahead and move back on to our lily pads. So go ahead and rinse your brushes when you're ready. Um, we're gonna switch back to our greens now. And this time we're gonna create, create a slightly lighter green. Now, if you're like me and you um, lighten, or not lighten, you darkened your green with a little bit of blue, um, then it's quite possible you can absolutely use the green straight out of the bottle. Um, for me personally, I know that my green is a little, it's still a little bit too dark for this next section. We want the next phase of green to, to stand out, not a whole lot, but you know, at least medium well. Um, we'll put the second phase of green, that's gonna be our medium green. And then our last phase of green, that's gonna be our light green. So we're doing a medium green. So in case you need to create that, um, what you're gonna do is use some yellow. Yellow and possibly some uh, white, depending on you. There we go, that probably needs quite a bit of lightning. So yellow plus white plus your green um, means that you can lighten it up. So once again, we're using that same brush. Same thing, just kind of, I 
I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not, there's really no real formula for this. So far, it seems like I only need the, uh, the yellow, at least for me. But for you, it just kind of depends on you. We just want it to stand out a little bit. Whenever you're ready, when you've got that mixed, you can go ahead and go over your lily pads. Once again, we're just going to swipe. But this time, we actually want to see some of our green showing up underneath. So some of my brush strokes are going to be a little bit lighter. They're not going to be quite as, uh, um, I'm not going to press down as hard, is what I meant to say. We'll get to really define some of those lily pads that we had to um, cover up. Just a swipe to bring back the, the shape of those lily pads. Really works best if, you, if you're able to go a little bit quicker with it. Now, this is where you can go and start to create those individual lily pads, the ones that we have just out in the water. So use the same technique and you, you can absolutely use um, this medium green, but you're more than welcome to just kind of double dip, double dip into your, your dark green if you wanted to. These lily pads, they they don't always follow the formula that we've set for ourselves and that's okay. Maybe I'll have just one over here, one right in between there. Honestly, nothing we do from this point really needs to follow the formula that we're doing. You want to go off on your own little tangent and do your own thing. Um, I highly encourage it. I always encourage exploration. So exploring what the medium can do, exploring what you can do. Sometimes you might surprise yourself. Maybe I'll make a big old lily pad right here. So I have a lot more space between my first round of splotches. Should I make it more dense before I add the other color or will it matter? Oh, you mean between um, yeah, the yeah. lily pad patches? Yeah. Oh. Um, Does it matter? Have you already? Uh, well, that. have you already? I've done that. Oh, you've done all yeah. this. Yeah. Okay, then you can you can totally go back in there and you can actually connect some or make them bigger if you wanted to. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, you can treat it the same way um, I'm treating these individual lily pads out here. We can totally just kind of connect them like that if you wanted to. Okay. It's so weird because when I put them on. The color. I'm always losing the color. I can only hold on yeah. to so many colors. And I'm like, but that's the oh, yeah. color. But when I put it on the purple, it's like, oh no, that's the color I used. <laughs> it's like, where's my mind? <laughs> I never know where mind is. my mind is every Monday. That means you had a good weekend. <laughs> I don't even remember what I did this weekend. What did I do? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, I saw family this weekend. My uh, my mom has an outdoor patio. And uh, she, well, she has a patio and she has like an, an outdoor little setup in which we can go and watch movies on the projector out there. She has a little like, she has like a rolling cart that has a sound bar on it and uh projector um that she just holds it props it up with with books 
and um, uh, we can watch DVDs. There's a DVD player there. You can like plug in um, the Roku in there too. So we watched, um, what was it? The second Puss in Boots, <laughs> which is really cute. I love that movie so much. All right, guys. I know I'm kind of going kind of fast at this point. That's only because I'm looking at the clock. Only reason. Um, if anyone needs to go though right now, then you're absolutely welcome to um, share your work. Um, but we're we're gonna keep going though. So we're gonna finish this painting. But just let me know if you'd like to share your work with me. Um, the, this, this, uh, recording is going to be posted online too. Is so, that on the bottom what? of your, um, it looks yellow. Is that yellow or is it just wet? Right here? It's oh, it's just wet. Yeah. yeah, just wet. Yeah, very confusing. I know. As long as we can ask the question, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Although I, I don't know, part of me wants to make this lighter than the rest of it. Maybe I'll do that on another painting. So yeah, it's just the, it's just the, the light. Now, before we, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember what the order of operations was. Actually, no, let's continue with our last phase of green. Um, so we'll go ahead and lighten up um, our green once again with more of our yellow. If you need to pull in that white paint, then go ahead and do so. A little bit of that white paint goes a long way. So you don't need too much of it. No matter what kind of green you have, you shouldn't need too much of it. So we're looking for just the light green that will stand out against the one that you currently have. And these brush strokes are gonna be even smaller than the ones that you had uh, that you had during phase two of our greens. See that? I'm going to try to put them on every little lily as much as I can. There's so many, so it's not going to, definitely not going to be perfect, and it's not supposed to be perfect. After this, we'll go ahead and put um, some purple on our pictures. And that's going to really emphasize um, the size of our, our lily pad sections. It's going to make them really pop out. That's supposed to represent the, um, the shadow in the water the shadow underneath the lily pads. There we go. I'll have any questions. Anyone want to share their work in progress? Just a work in progress, you know, you know, you're not finished. I'm too Why shaky. <laughs> <laughs> It'll all come together though later. So I, I get you. Okay. <laughs> You guys got this.
Now, once you're finished with phase three of the green, you can rinse your brush. I'm not gonna do it just yet. I'll give you guys another, another minute or two. We'll put that purple in there. And then after that, we'll go ahead and put in um, the, the last and lightest phases of our blue. That'll come later after the purple. Then after that, we'll finally pick up our tiniest brush. Make sure you try to rinse your um, your round brush as well as you can. Now this is where we'll go ahead and bring out um, our brown paint finally. I really like using um, the brown paint in watery scenes, especially the pond scenes here, because um, it's gonna it's it's gonna um, tone down our purple color. Um, really, any color you want to tone down, you can either use gray or you can use some kind of brown. So the brown that I have is more like a like a milk chocolate brown. It's pretty classic brown. But if you happen to have like a, a brick brown, a uh, burnt sienna brown, uh, or even like an ochre brown, you can definitely use one of those too. Mine's very classic brown. I have That's a question. Easy. Sorry. There is a yeah. bedtime drama happening in the background here. Um, <laughs> drama. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes. So um, did you, are, I heard you talking about purple. Did you actually do anything with the purple yet? Not yet, no. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. I yeah. thought maybe you missed something. Much. Thank you. <laughs> You're good. Okay, I wanted to give a little more time for those greens before we move on. And while we're while we're waiting, I'm going to go ahead and pour out. Um, a little bit of um, brown and a little bit of purple. Probably don't need very much brown. Probably don't need very much purple either. Just gonna use a little bit. Yeah, we'll see if I need more of that. Now, once again, it's a little bit difficult to um, to gauge ex or tell you guys actually exactly how much of each color to use. Um, I can see here that the purple seems to be the darker of the two, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna scooch over some of this brown first, and then add just a little bit of purple at a time, just to see what happens. It's not as strong as I thought it was. It's not bad. Personally, I feel like I would like my purple to be um, a little bit darker. And if you feel the same way, you can always add a little bit of blue too. There we go. That blue really helps. Makes it a lot darker. So yeah, optional blue. Purple plus brown and then optional blue. We just want it to be a darker color. Yeah, that made a big difference. And adding that blue um, will also help to uh, make it blend in with the scenery a lot more easily. And I want you guys to take note of where the purple is located. It's easiest to tell right here. It's all gonna be underneath our lily pads. 
And notice how I even went straight across on top of my, um, my water texture. So just kind of on top of that water texture. Um, it's also uh, not as thick of a brush stroke. In fact, I'm actually gonna swipe some paint off of my brush, just right over here. That way I get that, um, that drier look, that drier texture. We want to be able to see a little bit of that, that uh, blue poking through the little dots there. So I can pick a spot and swipe underneath my lily pads. Now these are supposed to be very loose brush strokes. They're not precise at all. You don't want them to be. Just gonna aim for the bottom of the lily pads. Gonna aim inside these little spots here, like in between the individual lily pads. And even then, I'm not gonna stress over getting a lot of it. Just a swipe or two here and there, and then jump away off to the next lily pad. I'm even gonna do that for each of my little individual little guys out here. It's a very brushy brush stroke and that's what we want. Gonna squeeze it in these little spaces right in here. I have so many tiny little spaces in between right here. I'm, I'm probably not even gonna bother with most of them. It's really all I need is right there. Pretty happy with it, so I'll leave it. Just gonna do that spot. Guys doing all right with it? So quiet. I know, I know. <laughs> We're down to the last finishing touches of it. Um, we will move on to, well, probably not yet. We'll, we'll use our, the, our current brush, the round brush um, for those baby blue um, the, the last little marks in the water. And then we'll move on to our tiny brush. So, so I'll sure. show you mine because I got to go. Um, yeah. I did my, because last class I did mine with like canvas with the color paint, but this time I tied it with watercolor. So watercolor. Yeah. Yeah. So, let me do that. I don't know if you could. See? Yeah, cool. yeah, I can see it. Yeah. You have so many little lilies too. So many flowers. Yeah, I yeah. love that, and I love the um, the texture of your your shadow, the purpley part. Oh, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, I yeah, love I that started, part. I was like, oh, I'll try watercolor this time, just to kind yeah. of. Yeah. No, it's hard to do the the flowers though like how you're gonna show so I just had to daub it like just like with a q-tip <laughs> so mm -hmm. that works yeah. that works yeah. So, <laughs> yeah thank you Susie but it was fun thank you it's nice seeing everyone again yes, yes. Have, a good have, have a good night yes have a good week <laughs> bye bye cool all right guys did you do a different me... painting last week on Thursday? Nope, it was the same it was one. The same one. 
I accidentally double booked it. That was an accident. No, that was no, it's good because you know, some of us can try something different. Because I didn't, yeah. I was having trouble focusing and I didn't um mm. take a picture of the original and then you were gone. So then I went on the MS Foundation. I was like, oh, is that the paint? Is that what it is? Is that what I'm supposed oh, to do? Oh yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe maybe it was lucky for you then. That's good. Okay. Well, so because I always have to take extra time, so I'll probably show you what I did the other day and then yeah. keep working on this one. Um, now I'm going to make a really light baby blue now. It's gonna be my lightest, my lightest blue. And we don't need a lot of it. Um we're going to I'm going to pick a certain area kind of like I, I picked a, this area in here to sort of highlight where the brightest of my um, my water sparkles are going to be located so for me maybe I'll just do kind of in here and I'll just do a few of these really light brush strokes when I say a few it's probably more like 20 instead of like 2000. So pick a general area to stay. Like I said, just kind of in here. At least for me, yours can be different. And then just put those strokes right there. There we go. Don't need too much more than that. Say that and I put like 10 more. Okay. Now the, this is my general area. And then we'll we'll switch brushes. Whenever you're done, we'll switch brushes. Finally use that teeny tiny one. Now I'm still gonna use the uh, the baby blue, just so you guys know. In fact, if you want to, you can make it even lighter than the baby blue, just if you want to. I'll stick with just the baby blue. These brush strokes are gonna be the horizontal brush strokes. Now this is really changing it up right here. This is really adding a little bit more depth. So it's, I'm gonna start with the horizontal brush strokes. They can be kind of scary to just kind of bulldoze through the this whole thing, but I believe in you guys, I really do. And after we do those horizontal brush strokes, um, we can go in there and choose a few spots here and there um, to go around our lily pads in certain spots maybe even do a few squiggles like up here. I do some squiggles um, over here, kind of a more wide brush strokes, or brush stroke. But we'll start with these guys here. So just move it straight across. The best brush strokes are the faster ones. And then some of your horizontal brush strokes, they can even bend a little bit if you want to bend them around a couple of lily pads like that one. I just bent it that way. And I can very quickly make these little rounded brush strokes around some of those lily pads. 
Maybe I'll jump up here, kind of do the same thing. Some of them just kind of turn into squiggles. And these squiggles, they, they remind me of signatures. You know how when you're writing, you're, you're signing something and you have to sign your signature a certain way? Um, it's similar enough to that. Same thing down here. Take these squiggles. I'm actually going to disguise my actual artist signature as a squiggle. Now you can do more squiggles than you see here, or you can do less. Good for you. Depends on what you feel like doing. Now this next part, it's it's very much optional, um, but have fun with these little um, squiggles or like half circles, if you want to call them that, within the lily pads. This is where you can really have fun with different colors. Um, this this is actually a light purple right here. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but it's a light purple. Um, I have a blue. I have like a, this is kind of actually like a lavender color right there. Um, if you wanted to go in there and do the same thing with yellow or even a really, really light green, you can definitely do that too. This is that more complicated one. So we'll do a few of those squiggles um, and then I'll show you guys how to do the actual lilies. Um, it doesn't really matter too much which one you do first. Um, so I'll just kind of get you started on the half circles and then we'll do those lilies. So again, um, it's sort of your choice whether or not you want to do green or light blue or light purple for these little squiggly half circle things. Just for just for the heck of it, I'm going to make a light purple. I didn't even rinse my brush. I actually still have blue on my brush. I feel like there's, for this stage, it's, re there's really no point in rinsing. You can kind of double dip if you wanted to. But this serves to just give your painting some character. See that? Make it more painterly. Remember, this is not by any means abstracted, or it's not by any means realistic. It is abstracted. My uh, my brush is very scratchy, meaning there's really not too much uh, paint on there. Looks kind of scratchy. That's what we're going for. You don't even have to put it over every single lily pad, which is which is what I tend to do. Kind of pick and choose. You can always add more. Now I'm just using that lavender color just because that's what I started with. But in a second here, I'll switch over to yellow. Maybe not yellow, maybe I'll do like a light green. Yeah, okay. So now I wanna make that really, really light green. So I just mixed a little bit of green with a lot of white. They can definitely overlap colors. Okay. 
There we go. Now I'll go ahead and show you guys how to make the lilies now. We do want a clean brush, clean tiny brush for the lilies. And we'll start off with white paint. So tiny brush. Now, these are, of course, going to be in perspective. Um, if you look at this one, you can see all of the petals pointing upwards. That's just a much more simplified way of drawing these, li these lilies and making them look like they're far away. So again, you can kind of see them radiating outward. Think of it as um, kind of like your fingers. Your fingers, they radiate outward away from your hand. It's very similar to the lilies. I'm gonna take this and pick a spot, any spot. Maybe I'll pick this one right here. And I like to start with the middle one. I do want a good amount of paint on my brush every time and then go from there. So there's the second and third, fourth, fifth. You can add a sixth in there if you can squeeze it in there. You just want it to look like it's radiating upwards. Now we'll start off with white paint because the white paint is gonna give us the most amount of cushion between um, the darker colors. We just want that cushion. That way our, our flowers will actually stand out. I think it's actually working to my advantage that uh, the hairs on this particular brush are really loose. So it's, uh, it's only contributing to that um, that type of quality that Monet has. So happy accident is what I'm trying to say. Anybody else bo watch Bob Ross? What's that? Um, he was a famous painter who uh, would come out on TV and paint an entire uh, scenery a landscape scenery in 30 minutes time uh, back in the 70s. Um, I, I loved him so much that I used to uh, make my parents uh, record him off the TV so I could watch it back nice. later. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> my grandma and I, that's what we used to do. We used to watch uh, Bob Ross paintings together. She She didn't really try them. But uh, she definitely tried like landscape paintings in general, but she never painted um, when when they when they played his reruns. But uh, but I would always watch with her. Did your mother paint? Uh, nope, my mom. My mom never painted. It was mostly my grandma. My my dad, he did a little bit of artwork, but mostly he was a, a musician. So that means that my sisters inherited the uh, musical, um, I wouldn't say musical talent. I would say like they were more drawn to making music than I ever was. Not too late. You're right. It's not you too only late. You accomplished so much in your short life. True. My dad even gave me a guitar that he uh, that he made um, a long time ago. He made this guitar back there. I don't know if you guys ever see it, but it's always in the background of my videos back there. Um, he made that for me, and he gave me a, an amp too. I just never use it. Look, you could turn 70 and start taking up art. 
totally actually i i have tried to to learn guitar but i think it's, right now i don't have the so patience no guitar is really hard like ukulele is much i tr i never advanced on the guitar and then i fell in love with the ukulele <laughs> And I was able now, to apply all these things that I couldn't do. That's <laughs> cool. Um, anytime you're ready to put some color onto your lilies, um, you choose your color. That's all you do. And for, for me, I chose this pink color right here for this painting. But you can choose purple. You can use really any color you want. And just go right on top and follow your footsteps. You can even leave some of the white showing underneath if you want to. I feel like that creates more of a, a Monet-like effect if you just kind of leave some of it showing through. Maybe all these guys just be yellow. And I'll leave it at that. You can always add an infinite number of extra brush strokes, um, extra squigglies, whatever you want. So if you want to take a break and come back to it tomorrow, you can always do that. Now, does anyone want to show us their work? Yeah, Tony. Here we go. There you are, Tony. Beautiful. Mm. Look at that. <laughs> you have so many little lilies, too. They Thanks. look I delicate. Board oh. and it's a little difficult to, um, it's a little rough. I thought the yeah. MBF board would be smoother than this, but you know. Oh, MDF board. Oh, did you, did you gesso on top of it? Well, no, I didn't gesso it because when mm -hmm. I gessoed the another one I did a couple of days ago was seemed to be even worse in terms of roughness. So Interesting. this time I did uh, what do you call it? Prime it with the, like a yeah. coat with a gray. Do you do you ever sand in between your coats? No. Try sanding next time. Um, okay. Wear a mask, of course, because you don't want to, you know, breathe that stuff in. But um, use like um, maybe like 150 grits or 200 grit to sand um, lightly in between each coat. Okay. Um, that'll give you a more consistent uh, texture. Okay. Yeah, so you give it a try. But but your painting is beautiful, though. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Beautiful. Who's next? Sharon, I see you, Sharon. Let's add you. There you are. That's gorgeous, Sharon. Look at that. That is pretty. That's really beautiful. I'm, I feel like I'm looking at an aerial view and I'm just loving the, uh, what is it, the, the reddish, like the pinkish reddish you used. I think that's what I'm looking at. You're muted, Sharon. There you yeah, are. A, it's a pink. You know, I'm doing a paint by numbers of um, Bango. It's hard to do the lily pads. They're difficult. They're, they look so good though. They really do. I'm glad you persevered. Like you really, um, you really went through it and you, and they, they look really good. They turned out really well. Thank you. That was fun. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye, Tony. Who's next? Oh, Marianne. I see you, Marianne. It's loud there at my are? house, so um, I stay muted. But. <laughs> Beautiful. That's gorgeous. Thank you. I had I had fun. This was good. And it was yeah. good doing it the second time, too. You know, making it yeah. different. Yeah. So you, it. you did really well, though. Um, it'd be interesting to see a side-by-side -side 
comparison of the two. Oh. <laughs> One of these days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but thank you very much. I enjoyed this. I always You're learn welcome. a lot. It's good. Take care, Marianne. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Yeah, I was glad I didn't have to be anxious. It's like, oh, I've done yeah. this before. I, I'm just trying something else out. But I want to show you what I did. Um, but I can show yeah. you because I'm always sticking around. Because I can <laughs> me, something. Well, yeah, I, I, just yeah, wanna, I, mean, I, I just want to make apologies to my buddy. No. <laughs> it's apologies. Been, no. It's been a long time. It's been a long time since I've used acrylics. And... Uh, this is the most loose <laughs> painting I was ever able to do. I, you know, took a class, a college class, mm -hmm. and everything had to be very painterly, very precise. So this very was precise. a lot of fun. That's yeah, why that's, we're here. Yeah. Totally the <laughs> opposite of what I'm capable of doing. I can't yeah. do like the more <laughs> precise paintings. <laughs> uh, you did really well, though, um, especially given your experience um, tightly <laughs> rendering things. You did really well with it. it it's a work in progress. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for showing. Lovely. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, I don't want to show you what I did, but no, maybe I anyway. <laughs> is this Amy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's okay. We're a judgment-free zone. I I promise. <laughs> Hey oh, Hannah, this is Katie. I'm gonna show you, and then I gotta yeah. go put finish putting my seven year old to bed. Uh, absolutely. Let me put you up uh, here. Pretty. Oh, but there we this go. This was really fun. That's I really, fun. really, really Thank enjoyed you. it. I actually um, so um, I'm not doing any of the art things, but I am training for the MS ride, um, the Orlando oh. MS ride in like March, oh, wow. and so I learned yeah. that orange is like the MS color I guess I don't know um but anyway so when I made my flowers the lilies I put on I had already put on white and then the yellow and then I wanted to put orange on top of it and it kind of turned out like pink actually but um it was intended to be like orange like they look you orange know, to signify they? MS support oh yeah. good okay <laughs> and I but I, I love the uh the texture that I'm seeing and I'm loving um the way you put the brush strokes on there if that makes sense, like the mixing of the two colors together. I love it. It was really fun. Thank you guys so much. I, I really was glad that I was able to join tonight. And um, <laughs> hopefully it won't, hopefully it won't be so long before I get to join again. But for now, I'm going yeah. go to Take care, Katie. Bed, so. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Good night. All right. I saw Judy up there. Let me uh, put you up here, Judy. This is the first time I used the boards. Actually, I like that. It's nice. Uh, Instead of the paper? Yeah. Yeah. Can you see it? Uh, wait, well, I'm, I'm trying, see I'm, look, I'm looking for your, your screen so I can spotlight. Oh, there, there you, you are. are. There and we go. I love the, um, what is it? The, the shadow that you put underneath it. I used, too. Yeah, I used a lot of purple. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know what it is, but I feel like it's maybe it's the texture, maybe it's the way you put the shadow in there. Yeah. Um, combined with the shininess, it makes me feel like the water is actually very clear, and you're yeah. seeing the a direct shadow um, uh, on the bottom of the 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 pond the pond bottom. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't know what to do with the blue. I have like it, like a lighter blue. I didn't have kind of the right blues. Um, but it, I, it, it's definitely lighter, <laughs> like a Monet. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. That was fun. Very relaxing. Perfect. Good. Judy, was that canvas board? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've never used a canvas yeah. board. That's really nice. I, it's lightweight and easy to handle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I use canvas boards for, for storage purposes since I have so many oh, paintings, yeah. you can squeeze them all together. I got Who see. else would like? Yeah. Who else would like to show? Camila, I see you. Here you are. There you go. That's pretty. Beautiful. Um, I know. I, have, I love the... Um, 
It's beautiful. I love the, uh, what is it? The, the background color that you have. It's like an aquamarine. aquamarine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All my colors are bright, so. <laughs> <laughs> they look so nice together they look like jewels all your little pods look like jewels they do it gives they off do. a very very happy feeling mm -hmm. is that your artwork back there um then you're on your wall yeah um no okay i was like it I do yeah. love this stuff, but no, those aren't. You did beautifully, though. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Who else? Who else would like to share? Oh, Barbara. There you are, Barbara. Let me put you up. All right. So this okay. time, my goal was to not use as many colors. <laughs> and then also um I ran out of blue. So oh, and I and I wanted to make it more green. So that's really interesting. So it's, and I we're we're actually going to Paris in June. So um we're gonna we're gonna make that trip out to see his uh gardens and in doing some of my research for mm -hmm. um the trip, um it, they said that he he would have like multiple canvases um, like set up outside and he wouldn't, uh, he would paint on them all at the same time, but not that like, but not at the same time. Like he'd have them all set up, but he would mm -hmm. do like one canvas was only for the lilies in the morning. One was only for the lilies in the afternoon and one was only for the lilies in the evening. So he would oh. catch like the same, like the same, like, scene but over various parts of the day and just noting how like the colors and the shadows changed oh, so mine kind of looks like soup. that sounds so hard <laughs> <laughs> i love your use of colors though i really do it's I know, very I um uh -huh. I, don't know, I don't know if you can tell but like so i said i wasn't going to put in colors but then i started putting in purples and lavenders <laughs> Water. I was about to say I thought that's what I think that's what I what I was seeing but I'm really happy that you put the purples in there um I feel like it sets it apart like it, it breaks up the space of the water mm -hmm. and um it gives it more depth yeah if that makes sense it gives it more depth and I love that part about your your painting I love it <laughs> Thank you. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it.